Welcome back to Flatirons Tuning. For this episode, I want to take a look at the cooling improvements that we made to our Pikes Peak WRX uh, this year to get ready for the 2021 Pikes Peak Hill Climb. Um, before we dump, jump into all that, I just want to say, uh, first off, if you like the content that we're putting out and if you like what we're doing with this channel, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. That helps us out a ton, helps the channel grow, and we greatly appreciate it. also wanted to say, if you've noticed a lot more long-form videos coming up, uh, on the channel, we have started to put up the Flatiron Syndicate Motorsports podcast up as a video each week. Uh, so that's probably what you're seeing. There's a lot of good stuff there. Uh, we've had a lot of great conversations, and we've got a lot more in store for that for the Syndicate podcast. So um, if you're liking that, uh, ho hopefully you're enjoying it, and uh, stay tuned for a lot more really good stuff coming from the Flatiron Syndicate Motorsports podcast. Um, and lastly, I will just say uh, this video is brought to you by Flatiron Tuning, as always. So uh, if you happen to need anything for your car and you like what we're doing with the channel, the best way to support the channel and help us come back and keep making content for you is to head to our website, which is flatironstuning.com. If you've got anything at all that you might need that under, if you've got anything at all that you might need over there, uh, your business goes a long way to support us and support us uh, so that we can keep coming back and making this content for you. So thanks very much for watching and thanks for your support. Okay, so let's dive into this. Um, we have always had cooling problems on this car, uh, especially going up Pikes Peak. Pikes Peak is a really difficult environment for cooling because the, the air density just keeps going down the further you, you go up the mountain. The start line for Pikes Peak, for the Pikes Peak Hill Climb is about 9,000 feet. The finish line is over 14,000 feet in elevation. Um, and, and that is just a, it's an amazing stress test for the engine because just, there's just so little air up there. Um, heck, if you even run, run a few steps from you know, Glen Cove or Devil's Playground on, you're going to realize really quickly how little air there is up there. And that puts a lot of stress on the car from a power standpoint, but also a lot from a cooling standpoint. So for this year, what we've done is we, we really tried to throw everything that we can at the cooling system to improve it, to try and give us the best, most robust cooling system possible. Um, last year, 2020, we had our best time, our best result yet. We finally got into the 10s, we were into 10.56. But even in that run, the car did start to overheat up top, uh, probably the last two or three miles of the course. And so our driver, Scott Crouch, had to back out of the throttle to keep the car cool to help ensure that we got across the finish line. And that's what we're trying to avoid for this year. So where we started is with the radiator. Uh, we have now got this new Killer Bee Motorsports radiator in, in the car. Prior to this, we've been running a Mishimoto X-Line radiator, and it's worked you know, pretty well for us. But what we realized is we needed to start with a good foundation. We needed to have the most efficient radiator core that we could possibly find. Because as there's less and less air to use, we need a core that's going to be as efficient as possible to use what little air we can send to it to cool off the car. So the efficiency of the core was one of the very first things we started looking at. Talked around, talked to a lot of people, found out pretty much everybody said there's this one company that makes the very best cores. And then we happened to find out that, well, that's the core that Killer B uses for the radiator. So didn't have to get a custom radiator made, and uh, we just dropped in the Killer B unit. So we have a, a lot of high hopes for this radiator. Um, in terms of radiators, the other thing I will say is we did add an oil cooler to the oiling system. So we have an external cooler for the oiling system, plus you know this, this really good core for the for the coolant. The hope there is, is as long as we're cooling both of those systems as best as we can, um, and, and, and and externally cooling both of them, hopefully that's going to help keep the heat load on the engine in check even as we go up the mountain. So that's uh, the oiling system side of things. I'll address more in uh, the follow-up video that we make about some of the changes that we've made to our dry sump configuration for this year. Um, but for this video, I want to just focus on the, the cooling system specifically, or coolant. So other than the core, the next thing that we thought about was airflow. Um, we, in, in the process of taking the old core out and looking at it, what we realized is, you know, we've always run a front mount. We've always had this kind of obstruction in front of the radiator. But we've all, we immediately took the AC condenser out of the car as well. What we realized is, well, Part of the function that that AC condenser serves, or minor part of that function, is, is the in plates of that AC condenser seal up the space uh, you know, between the radiator support and the radiator itself. 
Since we had taken that out, we had these giant, probably inch and a half gaps on either side of the radiator that the air could very easily go through, go around the radiator. Um, air, generally speaking, goes through the path of least resistance. And so if we're trying to get the air to go through the radiator, but we're giving it a wide open path on, on either side, there's a good, num good amount of that air that is just skirting around the radiator and we're not getting any cooling out of it. So we wanted to prevent that. So we really focused a lot on the ducting around the radiator as well. So if you can see these silver uh, uh, pieces, those are new, that's new pieces of ducting. And we actually have ducting, this black clasp that comes out in the front as well. So now, now any of that air that comes in the front, goes through the inner core or through the bumper, is now going to be forced to go through and channeled to go through the radiator. Uh, we actually even put in some, some ducting at the bottom because we had a small gap behind the front mount so that some of that air that went through the intercooler could then spill underneath the car and that is now sealed up as well. So we're, we're doing our best to make sure that any of that air that comes in the front of the car is going through this very efficient radiator core and that should give us a lot better cooling than we've had before. There's one other aspect of the airflow that we considered as we we're going through all this and that is the hood and the hood scoop. So we've always run a front mount on this car, we've never had a top mount on it uh, as we've run it in competition. And kind of the rationale for the hood scoop this whole time has been, well, you know, we're letting air kind of duct into the back of the engine. That's got to give us a little bit of cooling. It's probably better to just leave it, leave it as it is. And so like with this carbon hood, you can see there's, it's just wide open. There, there's, no, there's no ducting there. Uh, we're just kind of letting that, that air in just kind of spill over the engine bay and that's it. The consideration that we had is that because there's no restriction on that air that's coming in through the scoop compared to you know, the restriction of a radiator, an intercooler, or, or an intercooler that would normally be there, we're letting in a lot of air through that hood scoop. And what we got to wondering is, are we letting a positive pressure system build up in the engine bay, which would actually create a little bit more resistance to what air we were getting through the radiator to, to force it to go through the radiator and cool it. And at a minimum, what we're going to do is we're going to block off that scoop. But if we can find a, rate, uh, a hood that has it, hopefully in the next month or so, we're actually going to have a hood that has an extraction scoop on it instead of a hood scoop. So that, that hood will have a scoop that comes down here and actually gives the air that goes through the radiator an immediate path out, and hopefully a little bit of suction from the air that's running over it, to pull the air out from behind the radiator. So if we were creating a positive pressure system, that will go the furthest to correcting that, that issue as well. So with all of that, if we can get all of that working in conjunction, we're going to have a very efficient core and more air, effective airflow going through it than we've ever had before. And that's where we have a lot of high hopes for the ability of the cooling system to finally really work at its best and keep the engine cool and give us a full, complete run at full power. But as I said, the air density is always a question. Um, at Pikes Peak, and so we've always hedged that with a secondary system, which is a water sprayer. So we've always run a water sprayer to basically create a mist of water that, that sprays on the radiator and some on the intercooler. For this year, we've changed that up as well. What we did is we went to an AEM water injection, water sprayer, believe it or not, for a couple of reasons. Um, the big one is because they have nozzles that are that they're flow rated and you can change them out. So you have a lot of control over the nozzles that you're using to spray the water up. We've got basically two of them, one on either side of the, of the radiator. And it has a very good control box, way better than anything that we had before, so that we can actually control when, when the water spray turns on and how long it, how long it sprays for, and so on. And what we, what we basically had before was, well, let's just call it an agricultural system that had an on switch. Um, basically garden sprayers and that's about it. So this is, this system is designed to get a lot of water under a relatively higher pressure and good atomization into an engine. And so we figure, well that good atomization and good control should work really well in front of a radiator when we don't have air that we can count on. So the hope is with all of the, all of the ducting that we've done, all of the control of the air that we've done, plus this better control of the water, uh, water spray system that we have, the hope is that all of those things will work together to give us the best cooling system that we've ever had and again just get us up to the top of the mountain 
at, at full throttle, full power, without having to worry about trying to keep the engine cool to keep it uh, together at the top. So that is what we've done so far. Um, yeah, so I just want to say, you know, thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Um, you know, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we really do appreciate that. That goes a long way to support the channel and to help, help the channel grow. So thanks for, very much for watching. And uh, as always, stay tuned with Flatirons Tuning.